Hey guys, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's having a good Tuesday. I know I'm streaming an hour late today. I was just trying to get a video out for the day. Um, some cool news came out about Fastly today, so worked on the video for that first. Uh, but I hope everybody's having a good day. Overall, my portfolio seems to be doing um, nice right now. So I'm hoping everybody else's is also the same way. Uh, let's take a quick look um, at, at what's happening. Hopefully, I am sharing screen right now. You guys should be able to see. Let me just make sure everything is working properly. Um, one second. Okay, yep. So right now, portfolio, let's see. We have a nice amount of red today. Well, I do, I, meh, actually I have more green than red. Uh, if I take a look, the biggest reds are companies that were pretty up yesterday. For example, Celsius. Celsius was having had such a great day yesterday. Today is down about 5%. Nvidia was also having a great day. I think it broke 700 either yesterday um, and now it's down 1.3 percent uh, Tattoo chef again a, a lot of the stocks that have been doing pretty pretty well lately are the ones that are really taking the hit right now uh, But let's let's see what else then everything else seems to be green my biggest winners right now are space so up 6.6 percent we also have skills up 5.6 percent and we have fastly i mean fastly who has finally waking up a bit who has definitely i i do want to say who has definitely sitting at attractive c is now sitting at 267 so overall portfolio at the moment seems to be doing pretty good let's take a quick look at the overall market is there um is there anything uh anything really impacting right now and like always guys make sure to post my name is Jose Naharo. I take a look at fundamentals and stocks. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post. If you guys want me to take a look at any stocks, feel free to post. Um, this is this is a bit later than I normally come in. I always I always do earn, I always do my streamings earlier. Um, but we can see right the overall market right now is pretty pretty flat. The only thing really up is Nasdaq up 0.6%. I want to take a quick look at the overall map. Um, we can see big techs, uh, big tech players are definitely up. We have Apple up almost two percent. I, I do believe they did represent. They did. Um, they did a presentation yesterday. We have Adobe up one point two percent. Autodesk. Uh, now I know Q. I don't know if he's in here. One of our members in Discord channel wants me to take a look at Service Now. This is a company that has seen a nice correction. It is up two point two percent today. Autodesk video I did yesterday is up 1.4. Um, so we can see big players are definitely up. Tesla is also up over $600 again, up 2.1%. Um, the only ones really down today seem to be the banks. Um, anything with have to doing with financials are the biggest, biggest down days. Um, what's going on, Jesus? How's it going? Could you take? Uh, could you check out ENPH? What's going on, King Capital, BlackBerry, and Genius Brands? Whenever you can. So King Capital, I know BlackBerry and Genius Brands, those are two kind of very, very into the short interest right now. Um, Polly, good morning and appreciate the thumbs up. Um, so King, are you looking for more long term? Um, uh, my opinions in the long term thing or more of short term? I'm more of a long term investor um, it, just in case. Uh, but we can see right financials have definitely definitely taken a hit right now what else do we have um energy utilities industrials they're pretty much flat uh today uh it seems like the real winners for the morning so far have been technology pretty much the tech sector uh so let's take a look at cnbc let's see if there's any news coming out right now um inflation time bomb blah 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 movie theaters industry nothing really really affecting the overall market that i want to say um all right there's nothing here and now let's take a look at what's trending so in the overall market gamestop's still trending right we're still seeing the overall um i, I want to say if this is uh, i don't know i don't know if meme stocks is the proper word to say it uh but that's how they're being known right now we have uh, what was it workhorse as well all these stocks that tend to have high short interest are still trending pretty pretty well uh, we have fastly up 5.1 uh, percent even though they broke the internet um for sure 
uh, earlier this news. I don't know if you guys watched the previous video of, of me and Fastly. And King, you want to take a look at both? Both if you don't mind, but I'm looking more long term. Okay, so any I don't think I've taken a look at ENPH before. Um, let me take or maybe I have ENPH and face energy. So I'm gonna do King more of a long term investment mindset. I really don't know much about short term investment, too much volatility. So Enphase Energy, this is traded under the NASDAQ as ticker ENPH. It's currently a stock here in the United States. Uh, it currently has a market cap of $18.7 billion. Right now, let's see, Enphase is designs, develops, manufactures, and sells home energy solutions for solar, solar photovoltaic industry in the United States and internationally. The company offers semiconductor-based microinverters, which converts energy at the individual solar module level and combines it with proprietary networking and software technologies. Okay, this is pretty interesting. We can see it's a nice, uh, it, it seems to be a nice solar energy company. Um, and it is a, a nice market cap of 18.7 billion. Right now, this has, uh, it is a company that is profitable and they are positive in cash flow from operations, King. This is pretty interesting. I don't know too many, I don't follow the solar company too often. But it's not uh, it's not one that I can remember a company being so I want to say so strong fundamentally. So they they are positive in cash flow, they are profitable in earnings, and they're also expected to grow at nice power levels, right? Twenty one point five percent on average for the next three or five years. Let's say this was a, a AR stock, a augmented reality, a virtual reality, a gaming, a e commerce stock. Right now, based on those fundamentals, I would already be liking it. Like I mentioned, I'm not too too into the overall energy system, but maybe maybe this company can change my mind. If we take a look at the balance sheet, this company has about 1.5 billion dollars in cash and about 1 billion dollars in debt. Um, so right now the company is not leveraged, and even if it was, right, King, I wouldn't have minded because they were profitable and because they are positive in cash flow. I don't think yep, this company doesn't pay dividend. I want to take a quick look at ownership. Right now, most of it is owned by institutions and general public owns 23%. So in forms of, of king and fundamentals, right? I don't understand the overall industry. That's another thing. But in forms of fundamentals, I do like it. Now let's take a quick look at the overall stock price action. Uh, so the first thing I'm seeing is this is since it's been it, it looks like a growth stock it's gonna act like a growth stock and, and it did right it seen that overall correction that most of the market has seen mainly in the growth stocks what i want to say is right now it's it's not overextended in the metrics i use so when i see things like this i do believe a good portion of the risk has been eliminated there's still risk going on to it right king but a good portion has been eliminated it can still continue to drop i just do believe a good portion has been removed and it does seem it's a company i've looked at before because i do have certain uh certain support levels that i've added throughout the time now if we want to take a look at one more thing let's take a quick look at, at valuation metrics so let's take a look this is enph right let's take a look at uh not we're not looking at square so let's take a look at price to sales ratio and let's take a look at ev to a beta forward um so and let's take a look at them and individuals so if we're taking a look at this company's price to sales valuation it's these are levels that it's last seen in late late quarter four of 2020 uh, so overall the company still seems to be very overvalued compared to where it was pre-covid levels if we take a look at ev to a beta forward we're seeing the same things right it is a lot lower than where it was at earlier this year and late of quarter four but it's still a bit expensive compared to where it was pre-covid that doesn't mean it's a bad investment doesn't mean it's a good investment it's just understanding how valuations have worked okay um so right now i want to say there still is a bit of risk of it continuing to drop just because it is a little bit higher in valuation metrics um but that dip may never happen um it's just the added risk percentage uh king so i hope you enjoyed that this one was actually pretty cool i really enjoyed taking a quick look at that one um vincent la guardia gambini can you please review the company genoc my friend the stock analysis love it can i have your opinion 
Sure, let's take a quick look at it. And if I do like it, then maybe me and your friend can become good friends. Um, so, oh, Golden Nugget. Yes, so this is uh, online gaming, right? So it's the iGamification. I'm not much of a gambler. Um, I'm not much of a gambler. And no problem, King. If I did, if I did help out, make sure to hit the thumbs up. <clears throat> it helps a lot with the, with the channel and with the stream. Uh, so sorry, guys. <clears throat> This is, give me one second, just let me get a quick drink. So Gun Golden Nugget, right? The overall iGamification company. I'm not a big better, but we have seen the overall. I, I mean, I, I have gone around, right? I, I was in Vegas a few weeks ago. Um, and, and you just see things, people are betting. People love betting. There's so many sports events happening now. Um, so I don't know if these deals with betting as well, or if it's only online gambling. Um, but uh, I, I think iGamification is definitely a market that will continue to grow. So this is super small, $1.1 billion market cap. Again, we're just going to take a quick look at fundamentals, Vincent. I can't really look too much at the overall industry because that would take us a few hours. Um, so the company is going to expand into multiple states. Golden Nugget, it, it offers um, patrons to play their favorite casino games and bet on live action sports events in New Jersey and Michigan. Uh, so the company is headquarters in Houston and that's pretty true right so right now what's going on young investor how's it going um, hope you're doing good I feel like I haven't seen you in some time but I guess my just overall streaming time has been pretty pretty long um, and, and Zachary I am going to message you on Twitter later on I'm thinking about adding more interviews into my channel and I wouldn't mind having you um, if it's okay, but we can talk about that later. Uh, so, but let's take a quick look. So Golden Nugget, future growth. This company is expected to grow 39.5% on average for the next three or five years. So it is uh, expected to grow at crazy, crazy levels. Uh, the company is profitable in earnings. And they're all, uh, unfortunately right now, they're not positive in cash flow from operations. Uh, so I want to say sometimes when you see this huge earnings growth, uh, if we can see this, right? If you guys are looking, there was a huge, uh, huge, huge uh, gain in earnings. Things like this, uh, you would have to take a quick look at their overall 10Q report and see has there been a one-time, one-time gain in valuation right now. Um, but we can see before then, this company was profitable in earnings, and they kind of lost that positive in cash flow from operations. So I want a company like this to have a super strong financial health. Let's see. So this company right now has $153 million in cash and short-term investments and $132 million in debt. After seeing that cash flow from operations, I, I do believe, I wish I would have seen a better balance sheet, right, Vincent? This is, it's not a huge red flag, especially because they're still positive in cash flow, in, in, in net cash flow. They have more net, they have more cash and short-term investments than debt. But I wish it would have been a, a little bit stronger um hey, hey jose valdez saw your video on fastly have you ever looked at cloudflare um cloudflare is, which one i forget the ticker um so uh so yes um vincent this is uh right now just a red flag off the bat uh now if we take a look at the overall price action of golden nugget very similar right this has been a growth stock it has seen an overall a huge correction, right? I'm almost almost 50% correction in, in its stock price from its all-time highs. Uh, so right now, very similar. I do believe net. Yes, Jose. So I've definitely taken a look at net, not to the full extent that I have of, of Fastly, Jose. Uh, maybe I should do that later on. Are, are you a big bull of, of net? And Supreme, what's going on? Um, I'm looking for another AMC before it's too late. Supreme, I'm sorry. I can't help you there. Uh, I'm more of a long-term investor, and it's not that I'm saying AMC and investment stock and investment styles like that are bad. It's just not my style. Um, so if we take a look, fun, um, technically, I, I, a good portion of the risk has been eliminated, Vincent. So I am liking that. Now let's take a quick look at fundamentals. So let's kind of remove ENPH and let's take a look at Golden Nugget. Uh, so Golden Nugget, if we take a look at forward price to sales ratio, it is cheaper than normal than it has been. Um, but we can see there's not much data here. It, it started around January 2021. And forward EV, it, it's not even profitable there. Um, 
So in terms of where it's been since historical values, it is a bit cheaper, uh, Vincent. Uh, at the end, uh, this is with what I've seen. Obviously, I don't know the overall market, Vincent. Not a company I would really add into my portfolio at the moment. Um, for sure. Uh, doesn't mean it's a bad investment, just not something it really, it really hits my marks. The first few red flags were uh, the balance sheet, not a huge fan of that. Um, this company losing positive cash flow from operations right now, not a huge fan of that either. Not saying it's bad, just things to keep in mind. And then the overall, it's it's not too crazily undervalued from where it's been in the past. Um, so not a, I'm not saying it's bad, not saying it's good, just not one I personally would enjoy. And Zagri, for sure, I'll definitely send you one uh, today. I'm gonna, gonna send out a few. Uh, so if there's any other stocks you guys want me to take a look at, feel free. The overall market has been treating me super well today. Um, we have skills up 7%. Um, this is a, a crazy monster right now. Uh, definitely seen a crazy, it, it seems, I'm, I'm happy that we're now in the upside of trends again. That's pretty good. Fastly is killing it, 6.7% up as well. Uh, I do think uh, my portfolio is happy right now. Uh, Net is also up 4.3%. I wonder why Net and Fastly are up. Um, and then we have Sorens. Oh, man. I, I should just cash out and, and walk away. Just kidding. Just kidding. So if anybody has any other stocks, feel free to post on the comments. Um, if not, let's take a look. Are there any earnings happening? Um, happening today uh so today we're tuesday right so today we have momo reported earlier today i'm not a huge fan of it but i know certain investors kind of follow it we also have uipath uipath is the automation software robotics company i know arc investment has been purchasing this stock in the past uh so that one might be pretty interesting i want to take a look at how that one is doing right now i know i've done a video on it in the past um but just a quick introduction uh, stock price has definitely definitely taken a nice um, it, It's been pretty pretty volatile since its IPO price in April 21st talking about IPOs How is Roblox doing? I feel like that one has been getting a lot of love. It's sitting at $91. Oh, man Our, our discord member Tim is definitely enjoying this right now for sure. This is it, it's definitely doing pretty impressive uh, at the moment so guys if you guys want to take a look at any stocks Feel free to, to let me know. Um, telemarketer is calling me. They can. And tomorrow, right? Tomorrow we have GameStop. Uh, Kiam, you want to take a look at Lemonade uh, for sure. Uh, so let's take a look at that one. Lemonade has been, it, it's, it's definitely a pretty interesting one. First, let's start off with technicals. Um, so this company has seen a nice correction overall, right? It, it's it high of around $188 and right now sitting $86, $86. So it has seen more than a 50%, actually 106. Sorry, I was looking at some metrics. So it's definitely seen a crazy correction. Congratulations to long-term investors that picked up somewhere around $60. You're already almost up a hundred, almost, you're probably up 80% on, on, on those, on those, on those bottom prices. If we take a look in forms of, of fundamentals, Fastly, right? Fastly is gonna be a bit different. Since Fastly is an insurance company, um, some of the metrics I normally look at, Kiam, are not the best way to look at Fast uh, at, at, at Lemonade. Uh, sorry, I was putting, um, I was putting lemon, uh, Fastly. So Fastly, right, I mean Lemonade, I don't know why I keep saying Fastly, what the heck. Lemonade right now has a market cap of $6.1 billion. Uh, so super small cap right now, future growth. This company is expected to grow 42.4% on average for the next three to five years. This is a nice hyper growth stock. If we take a look at their website, right? This is the, um, this is the artificial intelligence uh, insurance company and they're always coming out with new products, right? I think a few quarters ago is when they came out with pet insurance. Now they're coming out with car insurance pretty soon. So they're working them ways, they're, they're working their products up. And that's, I believe, a huge driving force for this expectation in revenue growth. This company is not profitable and it's not positive in cash flow from operations. But unfortunately, like I mentioned, metrics that I use for my normal investments 
depend there uh, vary depending on the market as an insurance company cash flow from operations is not the proper metric to look at what you need to look at is um the company's gross loss ratio i believe it's called um, which overall tells you how much money they're making from their insurance business it has to be less than 100 percent i know in their most recent earnings because of all the fine all, all these kind of events that happened mainly in like texas i think we had um that that ice storm uh here in the united states and some other ones it actually increased the uh made this company lose money from its over from its everyday um from its insurance business but if that wasn't if that didn't happen things would be looking pretty good for for lemonade and that's a good portion this reason took that's a good reason this stock took a big hit if we take a look at their financial health they're, they're looking pretty good right 1.2 billion dollars in cash one and they have no debt to their name this is what you like to see for a company that's not profitable in earnings right now in all honesty this is probably the best balance sheet you want to this is an a plus balance sheet strong amount of cash no debt i mean 1.2 billion dollars in cash and this company has a market cap of 6.1 billion dollars so about what a little bit less than 20 percent of their market cap is actually being covered by their cash lemonade is not in my portfolio but it's one that eh, it, it, it could it has the potential of being in there um if we take a quick look at let's take a quick look at price to sales ratio for lemonade let's see how it's acted in the past um so right now it's definitely right now it's it's only showing from january 21st so not too long ago um before price to sales ratio because right this is a brand new company there's new analysts finally projecting um forward 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 revenue for this it's cheaper than it's normally been for sure obviously picking up at this dip of, of 20 is it would have been amazing um right now a price to sales ratio of 34.61 many investors might consider that super expensive at the moment um the only thing that mentions is i believe is there is an increased risk the risk of it pulling down is a little bit higher it doesn't mean it's gonna happen um so kiam overall fundamentally looks okay uh, it looks good right strong growth strong balance sheet um the only thing is certain metrics that i use it for not really viable for lemonade um, but they are continuing to to drop new products and i do believe now that they have homeowners uh homeowners and once they have car insurance i might become a customer in the future right I, i'm not a, I'm a homeowner uh, I might even do like a, tr a three deal. I might do homeowners life and car. And the more the more products they're likely to release, the more likely I'm I'm, I'm likely to um, the more likely I am going to go with them. So hopefully they they bring this to New Jersey. I know they're only bringing it to certain states starting off. Hopefully they could bring it to New Jersey. Um, so Vincent, let's see what else you have. Actually, John Carter um john carter we have we have mesa you know one of our members q really enjoys this company so mesa air group i i remember it just because q mentions it a lot this is a air transportation company to provide regional air carrier services under capacity purchase agreements with the american airlines and united airlines okay this is pretty interesting uh super small market cap right 340 million dollars traded under the nasdaq as ticker mesa so super super small market cap future growth this company um the first thing i didn't like uh the uh, actually no this is one that obviously you can see has been affected with covid revenue just like any other airlines it has seen uh it has been affected by covid you can see this huge revenue drop one thing i find very impressive though is even with that huge revenue drop they were still able to remain a constant earnings so that's super impressive the other thing is they were able to maintain positive cash flow from operations i don't know how this is possible i definitely like i said i don't follow I, i'm not doing uh the huge understanding of the business just the fundamentals but this is uh, i mean regardless an airline business that saw a huge revenue drop yet saw increase in cash flow from operations yet saw an increase in earnings what really happened um and and that's something i really want to see if we take a look at financial health this company right now has about 147 million dollars in cash and short-term investments this is an airline industry so i would guess most of their cash is actually under their 
airplanes, which would be under physical assets, right? So right now they have about $700 million in debt and $1.3 billion in physical assets. This is when it's important to really understand the type of businesses you work with, right? If this was a REIT, if this was a, a real estate fund, uh, if this is an airline industry like now, you understand that their actual assets are the, for example, either the facilities or their equipment. For Mesa, their airplanes are their assets. So that's why even though their balance sheet compared to cash and short-term investments seems a little bit weak, because they have so many planes, they consider a good portion of physical assets. So the balance sheet looks okay. This is also a company that's profitable and positive in cash flow from operations. If we take a look at ownership, I want to see right now institutions own 76% and individual insiders own 11.5%. Ronald Burkle, I'm pretty sure he's probably one of the big guys. He's, he's an individual insider. He alone is the biggest shareholder at 8.3%. So John Carter, I'm liking the company already. Um, let's take a quick look at the overall stock price action. So first, Mesa Air Group. Um, it's definitely seen a correction. I like this, right? It's sitting at most of its moving averages. So I want to say it's not overextended. Just like I mentioned, just because it's not overextended does not mean the stock can't go any lower. It could. I just do believe a good portion has been eliminated. I believe a huge risk of stocks when they have a higher chance of pulling back is when they are overextended. See, you see it happening here. They were a pretty much overextended, then they pull back, then they become overextended again and pull back. Unfortunately, the thing is you don't know how overextended they can get. So you can even you could it's overextended here and you can sell off, but you're still kind of sitting at same prices right now. So that's why technicals don't really dictate me to some extent. It just shows me if there is an increased risk. And then I put that risk in the back of my mind. So if we take a look at Mesa, let's take a quick look at price to sales ratio, forward price to sales ratio. And because they are profitable, let's also take a look at EV to a beta forward. Um, so first, both of these price to sales ratio, we're looking back to, let's see, how far can we go? January of 2020. So we can see the price to sales ratio for this company, taking a look at forward price to sales ratio, is actually at the same levels it was pre-COVID. So that's actually a pretty, that's pretty interesting. Um, and I'm liking that a lot, especially since this company hasn't really taken much hit in their fundamentals. If we take a look at EV to a beta forward, it's actually cheaper than it was pre-COVID levels. Uh, excuse me. Uh, so, and did I see, was this company expected to grow? Yes, it's expected to grow its revenues at some decent level, 16.9%. And it's also expected to grow its earnings. Uh, so who was this? This was John Carter, right? Um, I, I'm really liking this one, if, if I may be honest. It, it's it's definitely looking pretty interesting. Uh, again, I'm not really looking at the overall business right now, Carter. But fundamentally, the company is looking pretty, pretty healthy for sure. Um, in forms of technicals, it's looking like a good portion of the risk has been eliminated. And if we're looking at valuation metrics, it also gives me the same thing that a good portion of the risk has been eliminated. It doesn't mean that things are going to get can't get worse. I just do, do believe the chance of it getting worse has been it, it's a it's a it's a lot smaller. Um, so Carter, I hope you did enjoy that. And if you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up. I really do appreciate the support that you guys provide there. Um, and feel free guys. It, any stock you guys want me to take a look at, remember, this is not advice. I'm not a professional, but I've been investing in the game for about seven years now. And I have about uh, a little bit over, I have like a six figure. I just broke six figures a few a few months ago on my portfolio. Um, so so it's, it's, it's definitely working, whatever I'm doing. I'm not saying it's probably the best method, but it's working for me. Uh, so guys, uh, let's see what else you guys want to take a look at. So Vincent. Uh, friend also recommends VTRS uh, and Vincent I'll take a quick look but first let me see if anybody else that hasn't hasn't taken a look at hasn't mentioned a stock has mentioned one so Eric good morning can you take a look at VIH um, Vincent I'll come back to the other one in a bit first let me see what some of the other players so VIH this seems to be a blank check company so this is a SPAC is our SPACs back in? All right, so let's see. Do we know who this is going to merge with? Is this the uh, another fintech service? Um, Eric, do you know? Let's see. VIH SPAC. 
merger through as back um two 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 it's b a c t let's see Is this what they're going to merge with? Investors Place, January Invest, uh, boom, boom, boom. VIH, as comes from merchant notes, backs, back merchants. This makes sense. We'll take, all right, so now I want to understand what this company does. This is the first thing like I, I, I would do, right? So Eric, I'm not going to do a full analysis on them. But let's say I was an investor. Let's say I was I was curious about this back merger. I wanted to enter this overall. So back, they track, spend, and send crypto rewards, points, and cash. Manage your digital assets with Back's digital wallet. Um, so the first thing I would do is go to their company's website, and they should have an investor's presentation somewhere. Uh, so let's see, do they have something for investors? Not here. So another thing I would do is let's take a look at backed and we will put investors presentations um all right let's take a quick look so back right now uh let's see let's see what we can um so eric i apologize i don't think i can do i can do this one right now um, but this is one I might actually work on a video in the future. So let me add this on my notepad right quick. Um, so back and this is going to be BIH uh, SPAC acquisition. Um, this is one I, I need a little bit more time to do, Eric. So I'll probably do a video on them um, for that reasons. So the first thing I do want to say, since this is a SPAC company right now, I am liking that the overall it's sitting at its near its nominal value, right, Eric? Uh, sitting at ten point fifty seven, a good portion of the risk has been eliminated. You can see investors were super excited. I'm hoping the only reason the stock price, the overall SPAC price, has gone down right now is just the overall correction, and people are just not excited about the company. Um, if there are other reasons, then that's something else investors should really understand. Has has there been some news? Has the merger been postponed? Have, have have they kind of denied the vote? These are things one should understand. Um, but I'll try to get a video on that um, to you, Eric. Um, and, and probably it just seems interesting, right? For sure, to see some specs sitting next to its nominal value. Um, but my apologies, I don't think I can do a full analysis on it right now. Xavier, thoughts on Ethereum? Unfortunately, Xavier, I'm not a huge crypto guy. So I mean. Besides that, I had a few positions. I had a few positions since 2017. It's just been a small play since then, and I haven't added since like 2017. Um, so, uh, not saying crypto is bad, just not a market I understand. And um, maybe in the future, I'll learn a little bit more about it, Xavier. Uh, but at the moment, no thoughts on Ethereum. Uh, so, let's take a quick look. What else do we have? We have Breezy. Breezy, are you still in here? Want to take a look at AMWL? Um, so AMWL, American Well Corporation. Um, so Fabio, uh, let me answer your question first before I take a look at this stock. Fabio, you want to say any thoughts on Intel? Does it have growth potential? So Intel, for sure. Um, yes, Xavier, El Salvador just accepted Bitcoin as a legal tender. Uh, that is pretty crazy, right? It's, it's definitely insane. Not sure how to take that news. Again, I, I'm not much into the crypto. A few of my cousins did message me though. Um, so, so it's, it's, it's interesting to see a country really, really accept something as illegal, that is a legal tender. Uh, I'm going to see if other it's, is it a start for other countries to start doing the same, um, Xavier. So that's definitely pretty interesting. Um, Fabio. So let me go back to Intel. So first Intel is a huge, huge monster. Um, not something to be slapped on. Uh, give me one quick second, guys. Let me lock in here just so I can show you something that's very, very impressive. At the moment, though, Fabio, I enjoy a bit. I I enjoy a bit other. I enjoy other semiconductors a lot more than I enjoy Intel. Uh, so let me take a quick look at cash flow from net cash flow from operations, and let's take a look at trailing twelve months data. Let's compare this to, for example, Nvidia. Let's compare this to uh, AMD. Let's compare this to maybe TSMC. I don't know how much they make. Um. 
Wait, so they're not TSM? I don't think they come out. Um, mm, let's see. What's another? What's another big echo? All right. So if we take a look, so first, even though Intel is, why is nothing showing up? Um, where's my AMD and my Nvidia? Cash flow. All right. Sorry. Let's take a look at AMD. Let's take a look at Intel. I mean that Nvidia. And let's take a look at Apple, for example. And let's take a look at trailing 12 months cash flow from operations. So this is what I'm taking a look at right now. The, the amount of money these companies keep from their everyday operations. You can see this big player. This, there's this one big player here that's smoking everybody else. That's Intel. So I do believe there is a huge potential for Intel. I just don't believe it's happening right now. For me personally, I am a big player of NVIDIA and AMD. NVIDIA and AMD, just those two alone, I believe make up close to somewhere between 17 to 20% of my portfolio with the current gains that they have. Um, so those two companies are my biggest, are some of my biggest positions. NVIDIA is actually my biggest position. Um, and, and AMD is probably like my top four or my top five position. I do enjoy those a little bit more than Intel. Intel right now is definitely having a rocky road, but because they have this type of cash flow from operations, look at that. In the trailing 12 months, this company has $34.77 billion in cash flow from operations. So this is not a company that's going to fall down. Um, without a fight it's it has plenty of cash to throw at engineers it has plenty of cash to throw at suppliers at everybody else to make sure it doesn't fall and i do believe that's a reason certain people kind of sleep on intel they don't believe that's possible um but it is so right now i do believe the turnaround for intel can happen it's just not one that's going to happen in the next two quarters maybe in the next year maybe in the next two years but at the moment I'm, i'll pretty much put my money in AMD and Nvidia instead. Doesn't mean Intel is a bad investment. They do provide a nice dividend, I believe, um, but that's not a reason I invest. Uh, so Fabio, that's th those are my thoughts on, on Intel. Um, so let's see, let's see, what were we taking a look at? So American Well Corporation. Um, thoughts on UFO? Uh, Xavier, we'll take a quick look at that one in a bit. I'm pretty sure that's the overall um, ETF. Um, for a space ETF, right, Xavier? We can take a look at that in a bit. So American Well Corporation, this was by Breezy, Breezy681. The stock price right now has definitely seen a huge correction. Um, it recently IPO, it, it IPO the team in September of 2020. And since then it's kind of gone up, down, and it's way below those averages. Right now it's obviously uh, that $11.44 saw a huge amount of volume for the stock. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, let's take a quick look at overall market. I want to understand what they do first. So AM, AM, W, L. I'm sorry, I have my microphone. So sometimes, so American Well Corporation operates as a telehealth company that enables digital delivery of care for health care. Its application offers urgent care, pediatrics, therapy, menopause, nutrition, menopause counseling, telestrokes, population health management, tele psychiatry pregnancy okay all types of telemedicine online um it seems to be very focused in more uh i want to say female um stuff for sure we saw pregnancy uh, breastfeeding there so the company right now has a market cap of 3.3 billion dollars this is one that's expected to grow 23.1 percent on average for the next three or five years so definitely a nice hyper growth stock for sure breezy Pretty interesting. What was the market cap again? 3.3 billion. Um, the company right now is not positive in cash flow. It's not positive in earnings and it's not positive in cash flow from operations. So this would kind of go into my speculative play breezy. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's just that, hey, there is an added risk because they're not positive in any of those metrics that I look at. And guys, if you're here, make sure to hit the thumbs up. It really does help with the channel. A company like this that's not positive in earnings or profitable, I have to make sure they have a strong balance sheet. And this is the case, right? So Breezy, I'm really enjoying this. They almost have $1 billion in cash. So almost one third of this company's valuation is backed up by the amount of cash and short-term investments this company has. It has no debt to their names. 
Now I wanna take a look at how much money this company is burning on a per year basis. So they're burning about $120 million per year. So in theory, with about a billion dollars, they can survive in theory, right? Doesn't mean it's gonna happen. In theory, they can survive about seven years without ever having to make some form of uh, some form of offering or anything. Obviously, we're gonna see this company most likely do an offering to some extent. Um, but this is a company that can survive. Now let's take a quick look at ownership. Right now, General Public owns 44%. Um, the CEO seem to be either two brothers or sisters, siblings, whatever, um, and they own about 11% of the business and those two are the top shareholders. Um, so yeah, this is one for sure. Um, Breezy that doesn't seem fundamentally looks great. This is more of a speculative play. If it was to ever enter my portfolio, it would be somewhere between a tier three stock or maybe a low tier two. Uh, so that those those that's it for that. Um, King Capital, are you still here? Did I take a look at a stock for you, Kim? I did, Kim. So, um, King, so give me a second and I'll come back to you. Deathmos, IIVI. Let's go, let's take a look at IIVI. Um, and guys, feel free uh, to, to post in the comments, I said, if, if there's any stocks you guys want to take a look at. So, IIVI, this is a technology company. First, let's start off just with the overall. Um, Let's start off with the overall stock price. Um, so, from its from its, it, it has seen a nice correction, right? It's sitting at its moving averages again. Doesn't mean it's a good. Doesn't mean it's bad. It's just I believe a good portion of the risk has been eliminated. Now, if we take a look at fundamentals, this company has a seven point three billion dollar market cap. So a nice small small. So they incorporate, develop, manufactures, market engineer materials, and opto electronic components. And devices worldwide i do believe right now um i do believe the overall opto electronics market is one that's going to continue to grow right this is stuff used in high power co2 lasers fiber delivery um, beam systems processing tools dial lasers so these are things that me as a electrical engineer and kind of been in the overall market and seeing the overall products and projects i'm working with um, can see the the overall opto electronics market or opto electrical market um, is one that is seeing huge growth. So future growth, this company right now is expected to grow its revenues nine point seven percent on average for the next three to five years. So not a hyper growth stock, but but not a slacker either. And this is why this is a company that has historically provided profitable earnings and positive cash flow from operations. It does seem like COVID did affect this company a bit. I'm guessing certain certain of their customers might have slowed down in purchases which is what tends to happen during pandemics i believe i mean it's the first pandemic i went through so i i, I wouldn't put it put it to them too bad if that they were negative in earnings right things happen um if we take a look at their financial health let's see they have about 1.5 billion dollars in cash and about 1.4 billion dollars in debt they have about 700 million dollars in inventory so overall they have a nice amount of cash compared to debt so they're positive there they also have a good portion of inventory and they're also positive in cash flow from operations and profitable in earnings um so uh who was this who was this defmos i'm liking the company um not a fast enough grower for me uh but it, it's probably one of those stocks that i wouldn't mind if maybe i was I felt my portfolio was a little too beta extensive or, or too growth extensive. And I wanted to find something a little calmer, something that wouldn't be as, as volatile, right? Uh, so let's take a quick look at, at some of the metrics I intend to look at. So IIVI, um, first thing, if we take a look at forward price to sales ratio, it does look a little bit expensive. Um, it, it actually looks a quite expensive compared to where it has been in the past. If we take a look at EV to a beta ratio, it's kind of sitting at levels seen pre-COVID. Um, so depending on what metric you look at, it kind of shows you a different story. I do believe maybe EV to a beta is better for a company that is profitable right now. Um, so, so it does, this one looks pretty interesting, right? It's one that I believe a good portion of the risk has been eliminated. The only time I would ever add something like this into my portfolio is if I wanted to get into something less growthy and a little bit more cash flowy, uh, in my opinion. Um, so 
uh, DevMos, I hope you enjoyed that. Xavier, do I like Riot, Mara, or Coinbase? In forms of stocks right now in the crypto market, I don't believe I, I really have invested in any. The closest thing, in my opinion, I have is, is Square. And the only reason I say it's close, just because Cash App allows the overall Bitcoin Bitcoin transactions or, or purchase of, of investing in Bitcoin, and then PayPal for similar reasons. Those are the only two stocks I have Xavier in that market, right? Um, again, it's just not a market I follow too closely. I definitely want to to find out a little bit more about it. Um, Jeffrey Clove short squeeze. I mean that short squeeze, right? Jeffrey has been happening. Um, has been happening for for some time and investors i mean investors trader whoever um have been doing great with it right let's take a quick look at clove um look at that in the past three days this is insane that's that's ridiculous um investors who got in over here this has been uh let's and let's take a quick look i just want to take a look at the minute price uh, so just just today i mean it's it's been insane uh, i'm not a trader but I mean, it's crazy when you see candles like that. A big FU candle right there. Thoughts on AR stocks. So is that the stock ticker or you went on augmented reality stocks? Breezy. Um, and guys, feel free to post any other stocks uh, or any other questions, right? I, I've been investing for some time. So I, if you have, and if I forgot to take a look at a stock you mentioned, feel free to post on the comments again. Uh, but like I said, I've been investing for, for quite a while now. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, again, none of this is advice, but I, I, the overall goal of my YouTube channel is to just make videos to um, make videos that I wish I would have watched when I started investing about seven years ago. Uh, so feel free to let me know what you guys, uh, if you guys have any questions. So ticker AR breezy for sure. And I know some other ones, some other people mentioned some other stocks and I said I would go back to them. Feel free to let me know. Oh, UFO, Xavier. Yep, uh, Xavier. I haven't taken a look at yours. Um, and then we can go back to, to repeats. So UFO, um, not UFOs, UFO stock. So I'm pretty, this is the ETF, right? Um, is this it, Xavier? Um, procure space ETF. So if this is, uh, let's take a quick look. I, I don't think we can look much into this company's fundamental because it is an ETF. I've never actually tried looking at a U. Um, or are you taking a look at UFO? Let's see. Yeah, since it is an ETF, I don't think there's much much information one can look at in forms of valuation, right? Because this is all dependent on what kind of holdings they own. Uh, so let's take a closer look so ufo right now is it's been actually pretty flat for since february 9th of 2021 i'm actually surprised that this company hasn't really seen much of a price reaction that's actually pretty impressive i want to take a look at it in forms of technicals real quick uh so ufo let's see no that's not it UFO procure space, um, right? It's definitely not overextended from its moving averages. Um, it, it's kind of there, uh, uh, maybe a bit overextended. Depends of how how cliche how uh, how nitpick you are about it. Um, but right now, I can see. I, I would say it's not too overly extended. Uh, it might be a bit overextended from its medium short. Eh, actually, I don't know. The more I look at it. From its medium term, from its medium price, uh, medium moving average, it is a bit overextended. Again, that doesn't mean a correction is gonna happen, but it has a higher chance of it happening. Um, I do believe this 27 price has seen a lot of volume for sure, and it's definitely sitting at a nice, uh, we can see it's the nice support there. I wanna take a quick look at their holdings, UFO stock holdings. Let's see how, how they ticker. <laughs> ETFDB. Fabio, cannabis stocks. Any potential to be hyper growers once or once or not? For sure, Fabio. I think any any market right now, especially the cannabis, as things are becoming legalized, there are a few. Um, uh, there are a few. There are a few companies that could become a multi-backer i don't know i, I kind of lost my train of thoughts 
The real question is which stock. Unfortunately, I'm not big into the cannabis market, so I can't really see which one of those could, could kind of have that potential. But in theory, what you want to look for are companies that are leading, that are seeing huge revenue growth, that have positive balance sheets, that have um, that have that are continuing to innovate and that have products that are, are really liked amongst the peers. Um, so Fabio, those are things I would look at if I was ever looking for a multi-bagger. Um, and Lucas, how do you speak Spanish? Because it's easier for me to write your question in Spanish. I can understand it. Maybe my I, I'm more of a Spanglisher speaker. Um, Lucas, but I can definitely read it and I'll, I'll, I'll definitely understand it. Um, only thing is there's certain financial terms, Lucas, that I don't understand. Um, but, but give it a try. Uh, we, we, can, we can try, Lucas, for sure. Uh, so I want to take the overall holdings of this company. First, the expense ratio is about 0.75, right, Xavier? So it's not too, too much. It's not, it's not crazy. I think that's what most funds are at. Let me take a look at ARCX. So ARCX ETF um expense ratio what is it 0.75 so it's 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 similar price as arc in form of expense ratio this has this started in 2019 and uh, let's take a quick look it's holdings so it's top 15 holdings make up uh, a good portion of this company's portfolio i want to say a little bit more than 50 percent they own Orb orbit orbc dish um, Garmin, Trimbo, Series. Uh, so you can see, right, they're definitely focused in the overall space market right now. It, it seems like more low orbit. Um, so maybe I should probably take a look at certain stocks here. I've been holding since 27th. It's very slow, but I'm very bullish on the stock the next five to 10 years moving forward, especially with the space race between Amazon and, tex and, and, um, and Tesla. Uh, so right, this is a, a huge ETF, right? So this is a market. If let's say me, I was bullish. I was bullish in the overall space race, like you are. I mean, we're we're seeing it uh, happening in front of our eyes, right? Amazon. We have uh, we have SpaceX, Blue Origin. Um, we have um, Virgin Galactic. Everybody's just kind of announcing new missions on just and those are the three big players, right? Three major players right now. But within that space, there's and within that space, get it space. There's so many different companies also doing stuff that we don't hear about. For example, Garmin, the GPS, right? The, this is a huge GPS location company. Uh, a company like this is gonna do pretty well um, with the increasements of satellites out there. Uh, so if one is very bullish in this market, I can see this being a good play. Uh, a ETF, um, you're more diversified within different stocks. But at the same time, I, I do believe you have a higher chance of having positive returns because it's kind of actively managed. Um, so this, let's say I was I was more of an ETF type of person, um, UFO would definitely be one I, I would enjoy. Um, so uh, Xavier, I hope you like that. Uh, I think if you look into Cardinal, you will like it very much. Um, Cardano, let's see, I, I don't see that one. Um, I'll, I'll take a look at it, uh, ArcG, uh, we'll see um space 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 virgin galactic um david what's going on david david, david h how's it going um and lucas if you're here feel free to post your uh, question david h can you review unfi for me okay just because you're new um uh, let me actually look at ford real quick uh i i want to so who was it king capital so ford obviously right now is seeing a nice nice this is not ford sorry i'm like wait this does not look that like the overall stock price performance so ford right now has become the next ev play for sure right that's that uh, i'm not saying it is just saying what that's what uh, investors are looking at it right now stock price is sitting at 15 dollars and 65 cents since uh, it's down in March, this company has given investors over 300% returns. I honestly can't, I don't think I would have ever said that about for being that strong. I mean, since May, they, they just reported earnings on April 27th. I actually did a video on them um, there, uh, King Capital, right? Uh, the stock took a nice hit then. Um, for, in my opinion, so if, if you take a look at that video, I, 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 would, I wouldn't say I was bullish on the company but i definitely wasn't bearish uh it, you can see that they are moving forward in this ev market unfortunately the ev market is not unfortunately it's still in early stages so even though ford is doing good right now um 
it doesn't mean it's going to be the long-term winner. There's there's still so much growth here, right? I mean, they they did say a lot, say their their Mustang Mach E was selling out. Their Ford F one fifty, the regular one and the diesel one, were selling or were were had such low time on lots. Um, but one of the scary things was quarter two of this uh, this quarter two that they're going to announce earnings. They expect about a fifty percent less production due to the semiconductor shortage, right? So that that's something investors should keep in mind of. So upcoming earnings might look a bit a bit iffy, but I do believe um, a good portion of that has been eliminated, especially since Ford announced it. Right? It's not going to be brand new news. They announced it in their most recent earnings in here, April 27th, that 50% production was going to be affected in quarter two. Um, the only thing I definitely want to see in form of tech of technicals right now, um, King, is this company is a bit overextended for sure. Uh, look at it from its moving averages normally it tends to it, it tends to be within its moving averages so i do believe there are the possibility a huge a higher risk of this company seeing a pullback the real question is one doesn't know when that pullback is going to happen see it, it was overextended here overextended eventually there was a pullback but what really happened was the moving averages tended to get closer to it opposed to a huge pullback so a lot can happen technical wise. If we take a look at this company's fundamentals, let's see. Ford, um, $63 billion mark cap, future growth. This company is profitable. They are positive in cash flow from operations. They're expected to grow 8.3% uh, on average for the next three or five years. Financially, uh, I don't really like the overall car industry for this business. They have about $31.3 billion in, in cash and about $152 million in debt. They are a bit leveraged. I'm gonna say a good portion of them being leveraged though is they need to own these facilities, right? They need to own this equipment, these materials, everything. So a good portion, all this equipment, all these automation robotics to build the cars, make up a good portion of this long-term and other assets, right? Um, but at the same time, I'm just, personally, I'm just not a fan of companies that are leveraged in regards to cash and short-term investments compared to debt even if they have other assets in other in other if even though they have assets in other types of forms like 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 we saw facilities uh equipment just not my style right it doesn't mean it's a bad style uh, and it doesn't mean this balance sheet it's bad it's just not one that works for me uh if we take a look let's take a quick look at some valuation metrics for ford uh, so first thing we're seeing is if we're taking a look at price to sales ratio it's a lot higher than it's been even pre-covid uh, pre-covid this stock wasn't really doing much in the ev market so that's one thing to show if we take a look at forward ev to a beta ratio this is actually looking a lot cheaper than it has in the past uh, that's actually pretty impressive let me take a look at pe forward pe ratio Ooh, is that going to give me a different story let's see forward pe ratio actually yeah that's, that's actually pretty interesting so their ev to a beta ratio is a lot lower than it's ever been Hmm. That's interesting for sure. Boom, boom, boom. But overall valuations, two out of three valuations that I'm looking still say four has been, uh, it's a bit overextended right now. So even though I could be a big bull for Ford right now, it just one that, um, it's just that at one, I believe has a higher risk of pulling back. If I was to ever enter Ford at these levels, how I would play it if it was overextended, small position right super small position and add up over time um aaron what's going on aaron have you done have you looked at take two fundamentals are good but what interests me is that they have their strongest pipeline in the company history with over 90 games aaron i uh, mean I, I don't know if i did a full fundamentals i think we looked at it yesterday i'm pretty sure you were the one who mentioned it right aaron um over the next five years this includes the return of grand theft auto which is their best selling game ever agree their IP is it, to add such great value. Um, so Aaron, I did look at it yesterday at a stream. I kind of compared it a bit to Activision and to EA Games. We took a look at a few things. I haven't really done um, I haven't really done too much of a, a deep analysis though, Aaron. Um, and David, can you review the N U N Unify? We'll take a quick look. Let me quick a look at, at some other questions. Adam Taylor. What are your thoughts on CrowdStrike? So, uh, if uh, Jose, let's see, YouTube, Jose, 
So Aaron, um, no, no, what's it? It wasn't Aaron. Adam, I actually recently did a video, and wow, we have 35 people watching today. If you guys have, um, have, uh, if you guys haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. Uh, so who was it again? Adam, I actually did Crowd Strike on four uh, a day ago. Four top um, growth stocks to buy June 2021. Every week I'm gonna be releasing a series every either Saturday or Sunday. Four stocks I'm thinking of. Four stocks I'm thinking of buying this upcoming week. My buying is gonna be either done on Thursday or Friday. If you guys ever want to see my buys almost at real time, I post them on my Discord channel. Um, so here, uh, Adam, if you go here, I do believe one of these stocks is gonna be CrowdStrike. Uh, yes, I do talk about CrowdStrike here in. If you're gonna go go to that video obviously watch the whole video it helps the channel out um but at around seven minutes i start talking about crowd strike that is one of the stocks i'm looking on adding this week um for sure so definitely check out that video um and let me post it here just in case you you want to uh adam so around seven minutes if you seven around seven minutes um breezy appreciate the subscribe i'm, I'm here almost I'm here usually at nine o'clock, but uh, today I started at 10 o'clock and you guys, uh, it seems a little more lively. Um, so I, I don't know, I might start trying 10 o'clock instead, uh, but for sure. And here I normally just take a look at stocks. And, and like I said, my overall goal for my YouTube channel is to make videos that I wish I would have made when I first started investing. Um, and let's see, what else do we have? So Fabio, your question for, okay, let's see, let's see what else. So um, Breezy, thoughts on AR looking bullish. We'll take a quick look at AR. So uh, I'm going to definitely look at a few more stocks. Let me just answer a few more questions. Fabio, Jose, how much leverage do you think is acceptable for a company? So Fabio, that's a great question. I think it always depends on, on where the company is fundamentally. Uh, for example, if a, company has, if a company has no profits and has no positive cash flow from operations, I don't want any leverage at all. If, if this is a company not making money from its everyday business, no leverage at all. Now, if it's if, it, if it's a company that has positive cash flow from operations, but it's not profitable in earnings, a leverage, I, 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 I most I think I would like would be almost a one-to-one -one leverage. Obviously, the less leverage they are, the better. Now, a company that has historical, and when I mean historic, I mean more than three years of positive earnings, of positive cash flow from operations then i i i i could really uh, i don't really mind how leveraged they are as long as they're having more cash flow from operations um then they pay from that they pay down on debt and you can see that in their cash flow in their cash flow statement you'll be able to see how much they're paying down on debt and how much money they're making in cash flow from operations um, so those are the things I would look at. I, it, it all depends on where the company is in its everyday business. Um, oh, so Aaron, it wasn't you. So yes, unfortunately, the live streams are pretty long, Aaron. Um, uh, but let, let's see if we can find it, right? So this was a live stream. I, oops, this is live stream today. Uh, do, do, do. This was live stream yesterday. It was about an hour. Um, and let's see, let's see if I can find it for you so you can go look at it later on. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, here we go. So it's somewhere around 45 minutes. Maybe you can start before then, Aaron. Um, but I remember I did, I was looking at Sharp Machines here for, I, I compared it with EA Games and Activision. Um, so around 45 minutes. Uh, I don't know if you want to write it down, Aaron. Take a quick look at that live stream. I did a quick overview on it. Uh, so... I'm still looking into more. I believe it's valued five times. Any way to put your live streams on Spotify? The only thing, David H., I can't do that is they're so long, and I pay to put money. Uh, I pay money to put in uh, to put my account, my my streams onto audio format, and um, an hour long streams would would cost way too much money for me. I only have like twelve hours or 20, 12 hours. <laughs> and 12 live streams would pretty much break that down too much. Um, so let's see, what else do we have? Uh, so David, uh, live streams. So that's, David, the main reason I can't put live streams on, on Spotify. Uh, so Lucas, I usually use the Ichimoku Cloud to analyze chart in short time slabs. Do you know it? And what do you think of it? 
So, um, Lucas, I feel like I've heard of it. I, I've been, I've been trading, investing. I've been investing for, I've been in the market for about seven years. Throughout those seven years, I tried so many things, right? I tried options tradings. I've tried um, day trading. I, I tried so many stuff, and right, I've, I've kind of found out. I kind of done self reflect to what I really enjoy, and that the long term of things, I'm more of a long term investor. I, I so when I come to technicals, I don't really use it too much for my long term analysis. So that's why I only follow moving averages. I try to keep it simple. I follow moving averages and I follow volume based on stock price. So this is my um, uh, my volume profile. Those are the only two things I use. And I do believe they help me out a good amount. Um, um, uh, Lucas. But I feel everybody should have their own style. It doesn't mean it, this works for me, just like investing. Every investor should have some form of technical, some, some form of fundamentals they follow and have in some form of rule. Uh, it, it, and it's, it's not like there is a perfect rule out there. You just got to learn how to use your rule and how to use your tools. Um, so let's see, let's see what else do we have. So we had, we had AR and then we have, I forgot what was the other company someone mentioned. Uh, so let's take a look at AR. So is this one Antero Resources, um, Antero, Breezy? Uh, is this Antero? Or are we looking at the Canadian company, Gold? I'm hoping it's the United States. And I have no, no quorums with Canada, so it could be the Canadian one as well. Um, but, uh, all right, so David, actually, I'll, I'll wait for Breezy to respond. I know Unify probably only has one, so United Natural Foods. Uh, so first thing I'm looking at, uh, US. All right, Breezy, so we'll take a look at that one next. Don't worry, I won't. So the first thing I'm looking at Unify, I take, I look, I'm i looking at technicals. Again, technicals don't really dictate if I buy or sell. It just dictates how much I buy. So the first thing I'm seeing in looking at my time frames, and I look at 3D, uh, at three-day time frame, it is a bit overextended from a short-term moving average. It's super overextended from its medium. So if I ever wanted to enter a position like this right now, it would be a small position over time. Um, next, let's take a quick look at fundamentals. If we, what was the sticker again? UNFI, NFI. So United Natural Food Sources. This is a company with a market cap of my internet is kind of broken. Let's see. Um, all right, market cap of $2.2 billion. Together with its subsets, they distribute natural, organic, specialty produce, and conventional grocery and non-food products in the United States and Canada. It operates in two segments, wholesale and retail. All right, so they are in the food industry right now. If we take a look at future growth, this company's one not expected to grow much, right? 1.7%. So not a hyper growth stock for sure. Um, but at the moment, it doesn't seem... Mm, eh, that's pretty interesting. Um, they are profitable in earnings and they are positive in cash flow from operations. Based on their fundamentals, I can't see why the huge run up in stock price right now. This is pretty, pretty interesting. Their financial health, if we take a look at it, they have about. So this is interesting, right? So I was going to say they barely have any cash. That's OK, right? So this is a company. If you guys again, you have to understand what kind of industry uh, a company is in. We saw this is a food industry. So food companies, most of their cash is already tied up in inventory because their inventory is very quick items, right? They buy a food item, they make some food item, they sell it, they get cash, they buy new ingredients. So that circle continues. So it's, 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 um, sorry, I was just getting a text from my wife. Um, so right now they have about $2.2 billion in inventory and they have $2.5 billion in debt. This is why I always say it's important to understand the business, to understand where to look at in the balance sheet. For example, a software company, a software company, I, a software company, what I would really care about is cash. Um, so they are, I want to say a bit leveraged, not too heavy, um, but they were profitable and they are positive cash flow from operations. Regardless, not a huge fan of the balance sheet and not a huge fan of the overall growth i'm also not a huge fan of the of their technicals right now maybe if we take a look at valuations they might be screaming something else personally not a company looking at fundamentals again we're only looking at fundamentals um right uh who was it again david 
there might be something within the actual business that might have investors excited that I don't know about. So right now we're just taking a look at fundamentals and technicals. Um, so let's see, what are we looking here again? UNFY, FI. Um, so first, we'll see if we're taking a look at all these ratios, um, price to sales forward ratio, EV to a beta forward ratio, um, and forward PE ratio, they're all tend to be higher than when the company has normally been. Again, this doesn't mean it's a negative aspect. It just means that there is an increased risk of a pullback. And that's what I've been seeing with pretty much its valuations with its technicals and not a huge fan of fundamentals. Again, um, David, doesn't mean it's a bad investment, right? That's not what I'm here trying to say. I'm just trying to see where there is added risk. And I do believe there ha there is a bit extensive risk. Um, at the same time, like I mentioned, I don't know if there's something, some secret sauce this company has that they might kind of talk about in their investors' presentations that I don't know about. Um, so I hope that helped out, David. Um, and I'm sorry if it wasn't the answer that uh, was expected. But just it, it, for me personally, not one I would add in my portfolio. Um, Greystone, let's take a All right, so first, let's go to Breezy. Breezy wants to take a look at uh i forgot what was the what was the company ar so antero resources all right so ar very similar what we're seeing with some other stocks i want to say again it's not a negative thing it's just an ink added risk percentage increase right uh, um it, it is a bit overextended from its moving averages again there there's probably some reason for it maybe they had strong earnings maybe they have a new product but the first thing i'm seeing is it is overextended from its short-term moving average and from its medium and long-term moving average so if i was to ever enter a portfolio a position like this breezy um it would be a small position right small position over time until i increase until my position was a position i was happy with um if we take a look at fundamentals this is what was it called uh antero resources antero antero If we take a look at valuations, let's see, future growth. This company right now is expected, uh, it's it's very wonky right now, um, all over the place. Uh, it does seem COVID has affected this business to some extent. They are expected to go back their revenues. Um, I'm not liking how these earnings are very fluctuant to, to some extent, right? It, it's been all over the place. Um, their cash flow from operations have been positive, so at least they're making money from their everyday business. If we take a look at trailing 12 months, their cash flow from operations is almost $1.1 billion. They have a market cap of $4.2 billion. So even though things are looking pretty weird, right? Very volatile for sure. This company makes a good portion of cash flow from operations. That is actually pretty impressive. Um, $1.1 billion, $1 billion in cash and we saw $4.2 billion in debt. Um, so I'm liking that a, a lot. Let's see, what do they do? So they're in the oil and natural gas company, um, acquires and explores for, develops and produces natural gas, natural gas liquids and oil properties in the United States. Okay, so they are in the energy industry. Again, the energy industry is not one I'm too, fam I'm too happy with. Um, but first thing, right, that super positive cash flow from operations is super strong. Not much growth expected though for this company. If we take a look at financial health, they have $2.6 billion in debt if they are in the energy industry, if they own a lot of probably oil refineries or stuff like that, that's where most likely most of their assets are at. Um, I really do wish they had more cash at hand, but in theory, with the cash flow from operations that they have, they're more than happily able to pay down this debt. Uh, so that's okay. Not an industry I'm excited about for sure. Um, we can see institutions own 70%. Individuals own uh, 7%, general public owns uh, 21%. Now let's take a quick look at, at fundamentals, uh, overall. Um, let's take a quick look at valuation metrics. So uh, two out of the three valuation metrics, if we're taking a look at forward price to sales ratio and forward PE ratio, it is a bit expensive compared to its historicals. If we take a look at EV to a beta forward, it's sitting at levels that has kind of been sitting it's it's it's, it's a very quiet stock um for sure um so breezy not a stock i like not one i don't like i don't like the market I, the energy market is not one i'm in um for sure fundamentals were okay the really big thing i really just liked about their fundamentals was the super positive cash flow from operations 
Uh, so next, let's take a look at ticker E L A Y E L Y for. Oh, we've actually looked at this one before, Greystone. Um, this is the golf company, right? First thing, again, very similar. This is what a lot of growth stocks tended to look earlier on in the past. Um, Lucas Melly, this is one I've done a few videos on Lucas Caffaro. I really do enjoy Melly. Um, it's definitely seen a nice pullback. It's a tier two in my portfolio. And Lucas, definitely take a quick look at, at my catalog. Um, just go, just go to my channel and just put Melly here on the search. Um, Melly, and I'm pretty sure you'll find some recent videos about it. One was three months ago. Actually, one was four weeks ago um, that I talked about Melly uh, here, Lucas. Uh, Mercado Libre is definitely one I enjoy for sure. Uh, but let's keep looking at, at this one, ELY. So this is in the golf company, right? So as markets are, as the economy is opening back up, investors tend to be excited about stocks like this, right? So Cowway, the golf company, first thing, technicals, they are a bit overextended. That's not a bad thing. It just tells me, hey, Jose, be a bit careful if you want to open up a position. If we take a look at the overall um, company's fundamentals, $6.6 billion market cap. This is a company that's expected to grow 13.1% on average. So a nice growth for sure. Not a heavy growth, but nice growth. They are positive in earnings and they are profitable in cash flow from operations. So fundamentally, they are in a great place. Financially, let's see, financial health, they have three about $400 million in cash and about $1.2 million, billion dollars in debt. So they are a bit leveraged. I wish they weren't this leverage I, unless do they own golf course it seems like more they manufacture since they so they manufacture they so they might have some of the facilities um but most they mainly sell products so i i do want to say their financial health they don't have too much inventory either but they are profitable and they are positive in cash flow from operations their balance sheet not the best not the worst it's, it's not super scary but it's not amazing at the same time uh, a little bit below average. Um, they bought Top Golf, Greystone. Okay, so maybe that might be the huge reason for this debt, right? Um, so that's the good thing, right? So well, this is what I'm saying. Fundamentally, we can take a look at it, but I don't understand the overall in depth of what this company has done. Um, so uh, they just bought a company. They made an acquisition. Top Golf owns a lot of real estate, right? So maybe that's a huge reason for this debt. Um, so now things are looking a bit different. That's why it's good to understand how the business is doing, what they're really investing on to really understand the balance sheet. Uh, are you bullish on CCIV Lucid? So I'm not, Breezy, I'm not too much in the overall EV market. CCIV and Lucid is one I do enjoy though. Uh, I don't have it in my portfolio, so I'm not that bullish on it, it seems. But if if, if there was a EV stock outside of Tesla, and NIU, my two EV stocks are Tesla and NIU, N-I-U, not N-I-O. Um, CCIV, I do believe, has the potential of being in there. I actually have another one. Um, Protero is, is the third EV stock in my portfolio. Um, but if we take a look, Cowway, we can see, right, it forms of forward price to sales ratio and forward EB ratio. It is a bit overextended, right, Greystone? Um, but if we take a look at PE ratio, it definitely has kind of taken a nice pull down. Uh, so that's pretty cool to see. Definitely interesting to see for sure. Uh, I, I, I guess it, 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 it seems like it recently just became profitable. Um, but overall, in forms of these two valuation metrics, it is a bit overextended. It doesn't mean it's a bad, it's a bad investment, right? That's not what I'm trying to say. It's just there is that added risk. Um, so guys, I did go a bit over today, but I did enjoy the overall community. So I might be thinking about doing these at 10 o'clock if I do, if we get like the same turnaround, uh, turn rate. Um, so guys definitely appreciate the support. If you guys haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up, go support the channel. Make sure to go watch the last video. Just a small comment, a small thumbs up helps the channel go a long way. And if I provided some form of value, that's, um, that's definitely all I ask for. Uh, so take care, guys. Have a good night. Um, actually, have a good day. I'm so used to saying good night because that's when I do my videos. Um, but take care and see you next time.